Welcome back today, guys. Today we're going to be going over uh, part of chapter 21 notes, okay, specifically looking at the uh, major battles of the Civil War, okay. So uh, we're looking at standard 8.63 is kind of a lengthy standard. We're going to explain the significance of the following battles, events, and leaders during the Civil War, including the first battle of Bull Run, the surrender at Appomattox Courthouse, battle of Shiloh, um, the Battle of Gettysburg, the Battle of Vicksburg, and Sherman's March to the Sea. Okay, so that's mainly what we're going to be talking about today. Later on, we'll be getting into uh, some of these different leaders and events going through, uh, on in the Civil War. All right, so our essential questions for today was how was each battle of the Civil War significant? Again, we're going to look at First Battle of Bull Run, Battle of Shiloh, Battle of Antietam, Battle of Gettysburg, Battle of Vicksburg, and we're going to look at Sherman's March to the Sea today. So we're going to start with the first battle of Bull Run today. All right. So who was involved? Um, we see General Irvin McDowell on the Union side. And we see Colonel Thomas Stonewall Jackson for the Confederacy. All right. So what happened? Uh, the, it was a Confederate victory at the first battle of Bull Run. It's also where Jackson receives his nickname of Stonewall. Okay. They say he stood like a stone wall at the first battle of Bull Run. Uh, the first battle of Bull Run is in Manassas, Virginia. All right, and it takes place on July 21st of 1861. Now, why is it so important? This is the first major battle of the Civil War. Okay, so we have Fort Sumter to begin with. Now we have the first battle of Bull Run. Um, it's also important because the North, that the, the North thought that the war would end very quickly. Okay, but with the Confederate, Confederate victory at Bull Run, Lincoln knew that the war wouldn't end quickly. So we knew this was going to be a long campaign, a long war that would drag out. All right. And it was the first major battle. All right. Now, Shiloh, on the other hand, uh, we have we see Union General uh, Ulysses S. Grant and Don Carlos Buell at the Battle of Shiloh. On the Confederate side, we see General Albert Johnston. All right. Uh, there's a Union victory at the Battle of Shiloh. And Grant was able to overpower the Confederates and force them to retreat at Shiloh. All right, now Shiloh's in Tennessee. Okay, so it happens in Shiloh, Tennessee. This is along the Tennessee River in uh, kind of the western part of Tennessee. Okay, uh, this took place on April 2nd. I'm sorry, April 6th, 1862. Uh, and it's important because the Union victory meant that the North could push deeper into the South and take control of the Mississippi Valley. Okay, so this led them to get into Mississippi, Alabama, further south, um, and take control of that Mississippi Valley. Uh, the Battle of Antietam. We see Union General George McClellan at Antietam. We also see Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson on the Confederate side, probably two of the more famous uh, Confederate uh, generals there. Okay, so military-wise, um, this was a draw at Antietam. Um, it, was an in, it was an attempt for the Confederacy to invade the North. All right, so it happened at Antietam Creek, which is uh, near Sharpsburg, Maryland. Okay, so again, Maryland stayed with the Union. The Confederacy was trying to get into the North and invade. Uh, this took place on September 17th of 1862. And it's important for a couple of reasons. One, it's the bloodiest one day battle in US history. It halted the Southern invasion into the North and it led to Lincoln issuing the Emancipation Proclamation. So before this, the North had lost several battles kind of in a row with their win or draw kind of win at Antietam. They felt like they had won. Uh, Lincoln felt that it was a good time to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay, now the turning point, Gettysburg. Who was there? General George G. Meade for the Union, and then of course, General Robert E. Lee for the Confederate side. Um, so Lee went on the offensive, again, trying to invade the North um, at Gettysburg, and he hoped that a Confederate victory on Union soil would make Northerners lose support for the war. Again, Northerners think that this is gonna be a short, quick war, uh, the Confederates were trying to kind of drag it out, try to get a win on Union soil. Maybe the North will kind of fold and let them go about their way. Uh, Gettysburg is in Pennsylvania. 
All right, that's where this battle takes place is Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And it took place between July 1st and 3rd of 1863. All right. Now, it was a Union victory at Gettysburg. That's important. It ended the Confederate hopes to invade the North again, just like the Battle of Antietam. And it's the deadliest three days of the war. Okay, this is also the turning point of the war. People call this the turning point. Um, this is where the North continues to ascend and the Confederate side starts to decline. All right, so it turned the tide in favor of the North. Okay, the North would kind of ride out this victory through the rest of 1863 and 1864 uh, to go on and win, of course, the Civil War. All right, the Battle of Vicksburg. Uh, who was there? Union General Ulysses S. Grant, okay? Um, and on the Confederate side, you had General John C. Pemberton. Um, Grant wanted to capture Vicksburg, okay, because Vicksburg was a strategic port city on the Mississippi River. Um, so this led to a 40-day siege of the city. Again, surround the city, cut off supplies going in and out, um, and make people just kind of wait it out. All right, so this battle took place at Vicksburg, Mississippi. All right, uh, it was from May 18th to July 4th of 1863. So the Battle of Vicksburg and the Battle of Gettysburg kind of overlap here in these last few days. Um, and why is it important? One, it was a Union victory, okay? And two, it allowed the Union to split the Confederacy and take control of the Mississippi River. So with their victory at Vicksburg, the Union now controlled the Mississippi River and was able to split Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana off from the rest of the Confederacy. All right. uh, last one here, Sherman's March to the Sea. Um, who, General William Tecumseh Sherman, that's who it's named after. Okay, he's the one leading the Union troops here. Uh, this was a Union campaign where soldiers were told to destroy the countryside of Georgia to crush any fighting spirit left in the South. Okay, so they were gonna go burn cotton fields, they were going to go destroy railroads, uh, they were going to basically lay waste to Georgia. All right, so where does this take place? Uh, pretty much everywhere between Atlanta to Savannah, Georgia. Okay, this is where that's going to take place. Um, this is in 1864. Again, it's several months kind of spread out, um, so you can just put 1864 there. And then why? Um, Sherman wanted to be destructive and frightening, all right? Uh, he, Sherman wanted to motivate the Confederacy to abandon its fight, again, kind of make them give up by seeing the destruction that they can cause. Um, and it's also wanted to weaken the desire of civilians and soldiers to continue the conflict. Again, he wanted to break their spirits. He didn't want them fighting anymore. He wanted to uh, break their spirits. All right. Um, that is all that I have for today. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. If not, then we will see y'all next time.